Welcome to Airborne, live from AirVenture in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. I'm Ashley Hale. Today at Oshkosh, we get the formal announcement of the sale of Glass Air to a Chinese investor. And there is an official welcome for the Chinese delegation to AirVenture. American Champion rolls out some major upgrades to the Super Decathlon. And the very first RV is passed along to the EAA. We'll have the first of Jim Campbell's five-part interview with EAA President and CEO Rod Hightower. And Tom Patton talks with the new owner of Glass Air, Mr. Fong Tai Zhe. For Monday, July 23rd, it's Airborne live on Aero TV. ANN broke the news on Saturday, but a news conference Monday at AirVenture made it official. Glass Air President Michael Vai introduced Mr. Fong Tai Zhe, chairman of China-based Zhilin Haijing Group Company Limited, and new owner of Glass Air Aviation, a general aviation kit aircraft manufacturer based in Arlington, Washington. Private aviation is new to the Chinese. U.S.-based attorney Mr. Ben Li said that while aviation is highly regulated in China, Mr. Fong is working with the government to open opportunities for private aviation and create the certifications necessary to build and fly a kit aircraft. China's growing important to the U.S. general aviation industry was driven home by a welcome ceremony greeting the Chinese delegation and one of the new luxury chalets lining the Whitman Field flight line at Airshow Center. Approximately 100 members of the Chinese delegation, consisting of Chinese aviation business leaders and government officials, were welcomed to Air Venture by Mr. Barry Valentine, EAA's Director Emeritus. Mr. Jin, coordinator for the event, introduced Chinese dignitaries who expressed their desire to learn, communicate and work with EAA to grow the Chinese aviation infrastructure. There will be presentations to American aviation companies later in the week by Chinese officials articulating the plans and needs for future growth in China. China is also increasing its aeronautical production capabilities via entering into manufacturing agreements with Boeing, Airbus and Embraer. Despite recent legal challenges, American Champion unveiled its new Extreme Decathlon at a news conference this morning. The Extreme is designed to take the popular aerobatic airplane to the next level. With enhancements such as increased horsepower, a weight reduction program, and aerodynamic refinements. Jerry Melhoff Jr., American Champion Vice President of Engineering, said the new version of the airplane has a dynafocal engine mount for the upgraded Lycoming engine that produces an output of 210 horsepower, 30 more than any previous decathlon. He added that composite materials applied to the floorboard and ailerons have shaved as much as 17 pounds off the airplane. Aerodynamic improvements were also added to the mix with clipped wingtips and boosted ailerons, which combined contribute to a 33% increase in roll rate over the current decathlon. Certification is expected in October of this year. Today at Phillips 66 Plaza, the RV-1, designed and built by Richard Van Grunsven and the genesis of all his later RV designs, were dedicated in a ceremony in front of hundreds of onlookers in the hot Wisconsin sun. Its next home will be the EAA Air Venture Museum. One of each of the RV designs proceeded up the taxiway and parked along the sides of the ramp to open a slot for the RV-1 to be moved in front of the dedication platform and Richard Van Grunsven was greeted with a round of applause as he exited the RV-1. On the platform, a member of the restoration team told of the loving restoration and the enthusiasm that greeted the RV-1 on its tour of the U.S. Rudd Hightower then accepted the key to the RV-1 and noted its place in history, saying the EAA's Air Venture Museum is its proper home. Rod presented Dick with a plaque with the RV's picture to remember it by. For his part, Dick brought his two-and-a-half-year-old granddaughter up on stage wearing a jumpsuit that had been worn by her dad and taken out of, quote, mothballs for the occasion. 
Over on the avionics side of the house, Avidine kicked off the opening day news conferences with an update on their products since last year venture. While no new products were announced, progress is being made to get them all to customers as early as possible. Avidine President and CEO Dan Schwinn said the time frame for availability is early 2013 for the IFD 540 audio panel and transponder and late 2013 for the newly announced IFD 440. Garmin announced the introduction of its updated Garmin Pilot app for iOS and Android, including the support for the GDL39 portable ADS-B receiver. When paired with a GDL39, Garmin Pilot can display subscription-free weather and ADS-B data link traffic information for even greater situational awareness in flight. Pilots can also receive ADS-B traffic information and alerts to help identify potential traffic conflicts. And dying on avionics, answering the question, is that an EFIS in your pocket or are you just happy to see me, introduced its new portable true attitude indicator that can be used by all pilots. The D1 is a true artificial horizon with accurate pitch and roll. The AHAR sensors also drive a turn rate indicator and slip skid ball. Just charge it up, velcro it into your panel and go flying. When we come back, ANN's editor-in-chief Jim Campbell sits down with EAA president and CEO Rod Hightower for the first of a week-long series of interviews. You're watching Airborne live on Aero TV. Aero TV's live coverage of AirVenture 2012 is brought to you in part by Aspen Avionics, a new way to look at avionics, and by Concord Battery, the heart of your aircraft. The Evolution Flight Display System from Aspen Avionics delivers unique reliability and safety features to GA pilots and is truly the most flexible and affordable EFIS available. Aspen Avionics, a new way to look at avionics. Flightline presents the Oracle Engine Monitoring System, STC primary for twin engine aircraft and soon to be joined by turbine and rotorcraft options, Oracle provides unparalleled reliability and functionality. Oracle, the best co-pilot you'll ever have. The DFC-90 all-digital attitude-based autopilot delivers significant performance and safety improvements over previous generation systems. Its innovative flight envelope protection guards against autopilot-induced stalls, and the straight and level mode provides one-button recovery from unusual attitudes for an added measure of safety. Immensely popular within the Cirrus community, the DFC-90 is now being made available for a growing list of aircraft including Piper Matrix and Mirage, Cessna 182s, and Beach Bonanzas and Barons. Fly with confidence. Fly with DFC-90. You might be solo, but not alone when you choose to fly with Bendix King. Today, the freedom of flight can become clouded by complex technology. At Bendix King, we're working to make the pilot's job easier by developing products around safe, simple, and confident operations. Visit us at EAA Air Venture Oshkosh Hangar B, booth 2162, to see what's new in our product line, or visit us at BendixKing.com. This Aero TV segment is sponsored by ForeFlight, makers of intelligent apps for pilots. Best-in-class design and our fanatical pilot support make ForeFlight Mobile Aviation's most popular app. The One X kits continue the Sonics tradition of providing the best performance per dollar kits, period. This is Airborne live on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Earlier this week, ANN's editor in chief, Jim Campbell, had an opportunity to sit down one on one with EAA president and CEO Rod Hightower for a look at the state of the organization. They talked about this past year with Mr. Hightower at the helm of the EAA and discussed the overall health of the EAA. Well, 72 hours before everything hits the fan, so to speak. One of the things that's been very interesting, in particular about last year, the training wheels got took off, kind of surprise, Tom makes his speech, and boy, you are really on your own. If you can, synopsize your first year at the helm of EAA is, has been like without adult supervision. First of all, it's my third air venture from this, from this seat. 2010 is when I was announced. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, it, it is always one of those experiences that you have to be there to understand it. It's enormous in scope and scale. But this being the third adventure, some things that have happened this year are pretty phenomenal. We have a wonderful team of people assembled at the leadership team level in the organization of EAA that you can truly say they've done this air venture on their own. They've worked beautifully as a team. There's lots of moving pieces and parts and their staffs, their fantastic staff, has worked with 4,800 volunteers to put it all together. So I'll be the last guy to take credit for air venture. It's a team effort and it involves lots of people. This particular year, what were your high points, your low points, and the biggest surprises that you had to deal with? Well, I think the high points in the last two years have been the experience visiting with the members and with the chapters. You know, when you spend as much time in the field as I do, you get to see firsthand just how much great things that our members and aviators are doing in support of aviation. When you spend time at the chapter level and you see that passionate member bringing people into aviation, new and old, supporting their airports, taking good care of managing their local issues on their own, uh, it really makes you proud. It really makes you feel uh, good about the organization and the people in it, but it makes you recognize that individual efforts matter a lot. So when you're a committed member of VAA and you take your personal time to introduce people to flying, take your personal time to make your airport better, take your personal time to work with your local government officials and regulators to make aviation possible in their communities, that's when you understand just the power of the network of the chapters. 938 and growing uh, globally, and I can tell you they make a difference. That's got to be the high point. What would you have judged EAA's overall health over the last, well, let's, let's put it in the two or three year margin as compared to where you want to take it? Take the temperature, if you will, of the association, especially having gotten into well, two years past uh, economic decline and, of course, all the attendant issues that have taken place within the, the aviation community and the industry. I mean, half of Wichita is gone and so forth and so on. How has that adjusted itself in terms of the overall temperature of EAA? Well, when you talk about the industry of aviation, you're talking about a lot of variety and segments. So. We specifically live in and engage with, you know, the general aviation community, but specifically the sport aviation activities in the GA community, and very closely the home builder and EAB or amateur built activities in the aviation community. But if you take a look at a, a recession that this country has endured, when things started to really go south in 2008, that economic and financial impact has been hugely unfavorable to not only the industry, but to all the individuals in this country. This country has endured something we haven't seen since the Great Depression. So on an economic scale, that will always flow down and filter down to people's activities. You know, record foreclosures in this country destroy the American family's wealth. They don't have that wealth to spend on their hobbies and other things. So aviation has always had the, 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 the pleasure and the terror, I call it, of riding that economic cycle. So when the economic cycle is depressed, like it has been for an extended period of time, aviation takes it on the chin. And that filters to all segments of aviation. Obviously, there are certain segments of military aviation that's doing quite well with the international conflicts around the world. But GA and sport aviation, sport flying in, in particular. The bright spot, you'd have to say in all that, in spite of all that dark, depressing economic news, the AAB movement is strong and continuing to show strength. We are registering more airplanes each year than all the OEMs in the general aviation sector combined. So what that says is, yes, it's tough times financially for everybody and it trickles throughout the economy, no matter who you are, but that power of having that much performance and that much capability available for a great price still allows sport flying and still allows light airplane flying to take place in building. So I think that if you were to say what good things happened during that time frame, just look at the numbers for EAB, and that will answer that question, I think. The innovation that's taking place among the kit builders as they mature as an industry and as they grow in their experience has enabled people to build those airplanes, to put the skill set within the range of very, very many people. Most people, in fact, can build a kit airplane. Uh, that wasn't the case maybe 25 years ago, 35 years ago. So I think that dynamic has, has helped aviation, especially EAB, ride that economic challenge better than others. 
Tomorrow, Mr. Hightower addresses the rumors surrounding this year's Air Venture Cup race, EAA's commitments to its roots, and talks about his experience going to Reno's famed rookie school. And in just a moment, we talk to the new Chinese owner of Glass Air. You're watching Airborne live from Air Venture in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. On Aero TV, we'll be back after, in a moment. Aero TV's live coverage of AirVenture 2012 is brought to you in part by Eclipse Aerospace, the most efficient jets on the planet, and by ForeFlight, intelligent apps for pilots. Are you ready for the next generation of light sport airplanes? Check out the all-new Bristol. Fun, fast, and easy to fly. Learn more at www.bristol.com. The twin-engine Oracle CRN2120 offers a robust feature list, including a fully redundant dual-screen display not offered with other engine monitoring systems. STC primary, the Oracle, will soon be available in fixed-wing turbine and rotorcraft versions. The Evolution Flight Display System from Aspen Avionics delivers unique reliability and safety features to GA pilots and is truly the most flexible and affordable EFIS available. Aspen Avionics, a new way to look at avionics. Bright, light, and affordable, Sandia Aerospace presents the STX-165 Mode AC Transponder. Check it out at www.sandia.aero. Sonics Aircraft, the best performance for dollar, period. As a plug-and-play replacement for existing 430s, the IFD 440 FMS GPS Navcom features a hybrid touchscreen control which makes it much easier to access the information you want when you want it. Now you have a choice, and the choice is easy, Abaddon. Welcome back to Airborne, live on Aero TV. Just following his news conference this morning at Whitman Field, Aero TV's Tom Patton talked with the new owner of Glass Air, Chinese investor Mr. Fong Tai Jai, about his plans for the company, as well as how GA is viewed in China. Last year at Oshkosh, I met Mr. Fong here, and we began discussions about an opportunity for him to acquire the rights to produce the sportsman in China. For China. Over the course of a year, those discussions changed and it turned into a situation where Mr. Fong desired to acquire all of the assets, all of the products. And Tom and I expressed our concerns in our discussions about our existing customers. That's what Tom and I have been about since we started operating the company and obviously our employees. And uh, as I've gotten to know Mr. Fong and learn more about his plans, we feel like this is an exciting opportunity. It's going to add strength to the company and give the company its products opportunities that Tom and I weren't able to give the company. I'm so glad to announce that the acquisition of Glass Air by the uh, Jilin Hanshin Group is a great news for everybody. In my humble opinion, China serves the, uh, one of the largest potential market in the world and there's so much potential there, and we are eager to speed up our working relationship with Glass Air and expand significantly into China market. Mr. Fong, what made you interested in buying not only any airplane company, but this particular airplane company? Because he liked the rich history and the success of Glass Air, especially their types of airplane, the models they have, and he feel that's fit to the China market. What is the aviation situation in China. How are people interacting with general aviation? There are seven provinces uh, in China actually starting the uh, general aviation practice. Talk about your plans for the future of glass air not only in China but in the United States. We like the uh, model of the glass air and their rich history and the, the technology and we're going to invest extensively, continue the R&D uh, efforts and uh, within the next two years we're expecting to have new models come out to the market. How difficult is it for a person to become a private pilot in China and 
Is that something that you're working on to make that more accessible to the Chinese people? There's still a lot of catch up in China for people going through the process to get a pilot. But we are investing and coordinating with an aviation school in the U.S. this year and plan to send 20 students come to here to get the pilot train. You are also involved in the fixed-based operation, the FBO business. What kind of things are you learning here in the United States about fixed-based operations that you will take to China and increase that infrastructure? There's a great future and progress in China now. The company owns the first license to operate the first FBO in China from the government. And finally, what is the aviation future in China? What is the infrastructure, the way that you become a pilot, the things about general aviation that we all love here in the United States, how is that going to translate to China? There's a rigid plan by the Chinese government and a lot of commercial companies to really progress the market. In the next uh, five years and ten years plan, it's a must go. Make sure the market will open up for everybody. Mr. Fang, thank you so much for talking with us on Aero TV. Thank you very much and uh, guys have a good day. Yeah. When we come back, here a cub, there a cub, everywhere a cub. I'm Ashley Hale, and you're watching Airborne live on Aero TV. Aero TV's live coverage of AirVenture 2012 is brought to you in part by Sonics, the sport aircraft reality check, and by Viking Aircraft Engines. Take off with a Viking. Aspen's Trailblazing Evolution 2000 and 2500 systems offer an exclusive total backup capability that steam gauges and competing blasts just can't match. With full PFD capability built into the MFD and dual redundant backup batteries, Aspen's Evolution system offers the only glass panel that can effectively eliminate heavy, unreliable steam instruments. Aspen Avionics, a new way to look at avionics. The Oracle Engine Monitoring System offers primary replacement for all engine instrumentation. Certified for most piston GA aircraft, the Oracle will soon be certified for fixed wing turbine and rotorcraft aircraft. Oracle, the best co-pilot you'll ever have. Avidyne is the brand of choice for pilots who want innovative, easy to use avionics. And the new IFD 540 and 440 FMS GPS Navcoms set a new standard for ease of use and simplicity. As plug-and-play replacements for legacy 530 and 430 series navigators, the HyperTouch user interface of the IFD 540 and IFD 440 makes it much easier to access the information you want while reducing head down time and making flying more enjoyable. Now you have a choice, and the choice is easy. Avidyne. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Sonics Aircraft, the best performance for dollar, period. 276 and counting. That's the number of lives saved so far by the revolutionary BRS airframe parachute. See and read why BRS can keep you safe at www.brsparachutes.com. This is Aero TV's live coverage of Air Venture in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Thanks for joining us. As you probably already know, AirVenture is celebrating the 75th anniversary of the iconic Piper Cub at the show this year. And at the morning media briefing, EAA spokesman Dick Nepinski said there were 125 of the airplanes on the field. At that number climbs over 150, Nepinski said it would be a record number of Cubs in one place. But who flew all those airplanes to Whitman Regional Airport? Well, we didn't get to talk to all of them, but here's a good sampling. Came up from Hartford this morning. The first aircraft was off a few minutes before six. Hartford did a great job. The people there were so kind, no matter what you wanted, yeah, they, they helped you out. It was wonderful. One of the most incredible mornings I think I've ever seen in, in an airplane. It was just beautiful. It was really nice. The Cubs all lined up when the sun came up, took off on the grass runway, flew into Oshkosh. Couldn't be better. Yeah, 
today was a mass fly out. You're supposed to follow the guy in front of you. The guy in front of me turned east. He went way the hell out of the way. Oh, the, the Cub trained a whole generation. Such an icon in the, in the airplane industry. There's just something so unique about flying a Piper Cub with the door open here. clamshell design of the window and door allows you to fly with that open. You get a really good view of the world for aerial photography and just, just viewing, viewing the ground below. Five and a half hours of really scenic, uh, tremendous views. We wanted a Cub just because of the, um, the nostalgic value and it's my favorite airplane. It's nice to see that people are taking such good care of 65 and 70 year old aircraft. And this summer, we're flying our 1938 J3 Cub to all 48 states. First airplane I ever flew. Got to bring it into Oshkosh this year with a bunch of other Cubs, so it doesn't get any better than that. I think this is pretty much the airplane that taught the world how to fly. This was kind of cool to look down all the rows of Cubs and, and uh, everything was Cub, Cub, Cubs. So it's pretty neat to, to honor them like they have. You know. Everybody saw these little yellow airplanes. They built lots of them. It's seat of your pants. It's uh, wind in your face. It's tail wheel. You know, I don't know how many Cubs were at the at the first Oshkosh, but if there's you know been one constant through every fly-in, every air show, you know, for the last 75 years, it's been a J3. So. If you're attending Oshkosh this week, be sure to get down to the south end of the field and see the sea of Cubs. It's quite an impressive sight. And that's just some of what's happening at. Air Venture today. Tomorrow, at least one more new airplane makes its USG debut, and Jim Campbell talks with Rod Hightower about his first full year at the helm of the organization. Of course, there's a lot more news on aero-news.net, so go check it out. I'm Ashley, I'm Ashley Hale, and no matter if you're calling it Hot Kosh, Oshkorch, or something else, we'll see you tomorrow night on Airborne, live from Air Venture in Oshkosh. Provided we don't all melt away, of course. Thanks for watching. Arrow TV's live coverage of AirVenture 2012 is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. Waco Classic Aircraft carries on the proud tradition of the open cockpit biplane, exhilarating to fly, beautiful to behold. With its classic graceful design, the Waco YMF 5D is custom built for each owner. Learn more at www.wacoaircraft.com. Powerful and reliable sport plane engines can be cost effective. Check out the amazing Viking 110 power plant at www.vikingaircraftengines.com. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Com. Concorde Platinum Series batteries are available for all aircraft and offer extra cranking power, resulting in less draw on the battery per cycle for longer life. Visit booth 2053 at Oshkosh. Concorde, for the heart of your aircraft. 276 and counting. That's the number of lives saved so far by the revolutionary BRS airframe parachute. See and read why BRS can keep you safe at www.brsparachutes.com.